हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर प्रसन्न कुमार सो टुडे आई विल बी टेकिंग अ क्लास ऑन सिस्टमिक स्क्लेरोसिस सो सिस्टमिक स्क्लेरोसिस इज अ मल्टी सिस्टम डिसऑर्डर ऑफ अनोन कॉज इट इज बेसिकली कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय फाइब्रोसिस ऑफ द स्किन ब्लड वेसल्स एंड विसरल ऑर्गन्स एक्चुअली इट इन्वॉल्व्स मेनी ऑर्गन सिस्टम सो इट इज अ मल्टी सिस्टम डिसऑर्डर यूजली ऑफ एन अनोन इटियोलॉजी due to an autoimmune etiology so due to thickening of the skin which is caused by accumulation of uh, connective tissue like collagen type 1 and type 3 so which leads to significant disability and mortality so what happens basically is there will be a fibrosis of the skin blood vessels and the visceral organs like visceral organs like many visceral organs are involved musculoskeletal organs gastrointestinal tract lungs and kidneys may be involved so coming to the epidemiology so the peak age range is between 30 to 55 years so it affects mainly the younger age group of women and uh, in them the disease will be very diffuse and uh, female is to male preponderance there will be a, a predilection to female there is 4.6 is to 1 4.6 female to 1 male is affected so incidence is 20 per million per year it is an us statistics okay okay so what would be the etiology so basically uh, some environmental exposures are implicated mainly silica exposure uh, in men is comfort with the increased risk and uh, silicone based implants in f- uh, females no definite risk identified Uh, contaminated rapeseed oil used for cooking in Spain led to toxic oil syndrome in 1980, which were also uh, implicated in this uh, scleroderma. Vinyl chloride exposure increased risk of systemic sclerosis, like disorder, which led to eosinophilic fasc- fasciitis. Some other agents, chemical agents like bleomycin, pentajosin, and cocaine. uh and some viral infection like epstein barr virus and cytomegalo virus the genetic factors may all uh, may be involved with include family clustering in 1.5 to 2.5% 2.5% of those with first degree relatives there is a hla association uh there are high risk haplotypes in certain populations so coming to the pathogenesis what happens is there will be a initial vascular injury in a genetically susceptible individual which triggers functional and structural vascular alteration inflammation and autoimmunity which ultimately culminates in tissue fibrosis as you can see there will be a vascular injury which leads to activation of endothelial cells platelets alternative component pathway coagulation cascade mainly endothelin 1 and reactive oxygen species expression will be there which leads to innate and adaptive immune responses which leads to recruitment of activation of cd4 and cd8 cells type 2 interleukins monocytes macrophages b cells and toll like receptors plasma cytodendritic cells uh, which are pro inflammatory and pro fibrotic mediators like cytokines interferons and tumor growth factor beta so there will be a fibrotic response which leads to fibroblast activation myofibroblast differentiation mesenchymal progenital cell impairment epithelial or endothelial cell to mesenchymal transition and apoptosis resistance which leads to tissue hypoxia okay so there will be a extracellular because of which there will be extracellular matrix remodeling and deposition and accumulation of collagen fibronectin proteoglycans and there will be a extracellular matrix reorganization reorganization stiffness and contraction leading to the tissue fibrosis so there are uh, mainly there are two forms of uh, systemic sclerosis uh, which is uh, limited systemic sclerosis and diffuse scleroderma okay so uh, what happens in uh, limited uh, scleroderma is the skin thickening is only dist- uh, is uh, distal to elbows and knees and it doesn't involve the trunk so only 
the area below the elbow and below the knees are involved okay so we can involve the perioral perioral skin which leads to perioral skin thickening which leads to pursing of the lips okay so here basically there will be less organ involvement uh, it is also seen in crest syndrome crest syndrome is nothing but calcinosis Reynolds phenomenon esophageal dysmotility sclerodactyly and telangiectasia syndrome okay so in limited scleroderma there may be isolated pulmonary hypertension can also occur okay so uh, what happens in uh, limited uh, scleroderma is uh, this renault phenomenon it precedes the skin disease by many years okay so organ involvement will be gastrointestinal pulmonary artery hypertension is uh, one of the manifestation after 10 to 15 years of disease in uh, up to less than 10 percent of patients they may have also biliary cirrhosis okay so here the anti-nuclear ANA anti-nuclear antibody involved will be anti-centromere okay anti-centromere antibodies okay so diffuse scleroderma the skin thickening will be proximal to the elbows and knees involving the trunk it's a uh, more likely to have many organ involvement okay pulmonary fibrosis and renal crisis are very common here there will be interstitial fibrosis and renovascular hypertension with gastrointestinal and cardiac involvement okay so the renal phenomenon can also be the manifestation within the onset of one year or at a time of skin changes the skin involvement are distal and proximal extremities face and trunk okay so coming to the limited uh, cutaneous uh, system sclerosis as i said it is limited to the fingers which is distal to elbows face and it is usually slow in progression okay so renal phenomenon is precedes the skin involvement which is associated with critical ischemia okay which leads to digital gangrene and there may be a pulmonary fibrosis which may be moderate okay uh, which will be severe in uh, case of diffuse scleroderma but in case of limited cutaneous scleroderma there will be a moderate one okay pulmonary arterial hypertension it is frequent in limited scleroderma but it is late and may be isolated Scler scleroderma renal crisis is very common in uh, diffuse scleroderma but is very rare in limited scleroderma calcinosis cutis is very frequent that is involvement of uh, the crest syndrome okay so characteristic antibodies are anti-centromere antibodies in 70 to 80 percent of the individuals so here there will be organ involvement will be very less as i said there is a uh, crest syndrome as was uh, limited symptoms of scleroderma are referred to as crest which is calcinosis means there will be calcium deposits in the skin as you can see in the figure and there will be renal phenomenon renal phenomenon is basically this uh, it's a clinical syndrome of episodic color change of the digits in response to cold and in some patients uh, in response to emotional stress the typical sequence is pallor that is arterial constriction second to arterial constriction which is followed by cyanosis first there will be pallor then second followed by cyanosis cyanosis is due to some basically due to vasospasm and desaturation of hemoglobin uh, renal phenomenon is not only associated with the scleroderma uh, which basically mainly associated with uh, scleroderma but also may be seen in rheumatoid arthritis scler uh, dermatomyositis and sle okay uh, in scleroderma uh, mainly seen with limited scleroderma okay so this is those calcium deposits in the finger as you see in the first left side first figure okay calcium deposits with calcinosis cutis you can see this Reynolds phenomenon where there is a pilar due to arterial constriction you can see superficial dysmotility in this is of figures thickening of the skin okay of this to our finger skin of the fingers okay that is called sclerodactyly and telangiectasias you can see this okay uh, those red spots okay so this is a calcinosis on x-ray you can see this calcium deposits and this is nail fold capillariscopy nail fold capillariscopy which detects the finger nail capillaries dilated capillaries in case of uh, this 
limited scleroderma and also in diffuse scleroderma so diffuse scleroderma it is a more rapid process whereas uh, limited scleroderma was a uh, progression was very slow uh, it may often involve without any onset of skin thickening within a year of Reynolds symptoms skin involvement is proximal to elbows and knees it involves trunk face okay capillary involves dropout that is with capillary dilatation and dropout early organ involvement is the rule in case of diffuse scleroderma that is uh, renal involvement in, uh, it may be there early renal involvement with renovascular hypertension okay uh, and there may be interstitial lung disease myocardial involvement with there diffuse gastric involvement will also be there okay often within the first three years antibodies mainly seen in this are anti topo isomerase 1 or anti scleroderma 70 anti rna polymerase 3 antibodies see okay uh, this are the uh, lung involvement and also the skin of the finger thickened and uh, uh, renal phenomena may also be involved okay organs involved are skin musculoskeletal pulmonary renal gastrointestinal and cardiac okay so the skin involvement there will be fibrosis of the skin okay there will be perivascular in early stage will perivascular infiltrate which are primarily t cells skin swelling which eventually becomes thickening involves the hands and the feet later stage there will be finger like projections of collagen which extends from the dermis to the subcutaneous tissue to anchor uh, deeper skin and the skin becomes firm thick and tight uh, so this skin thickening moves proximally and where there will be fibrillar vast and collagen deposition hair and wrinkles overlying area of skin thickening disappears okay so this may regress on its own over years which is called as reverse pattern that is starting with regression of skin thickening in the trunk then proximal extremities then it goes towards doors more distally so digital ulcers may be there on extensor surface of proximal inter interphalanges and elbows may become this digital ulcer may become secondarily infected okay so there may also be a digital ischemia with pits in the digital aspect of digits related to the prolonged Reynolds effect so thinning of the lips uh, and the thinning of the nose will lead to beak like appearance of the nose you can see this beak like appearance of the nose okay and there will digital gangrene of the digits fine musculoskeletal involvement there will be symmetric polyarthritis okay resembling rheumatoid arthritis there will be resorption of bone involving terminal phalanges ribs clavicle and the angle of the mandible there may be also carpal tunnel syndrome okay there will be skin contractures which are related to skin thickening there may be a polymyositis like syndrome okay which is may occur as a part of mechanical tissue disorder or a overlap syndrome okay so pulmonary involvement is the main cause of death where there will be interstitial lung disease in the form of interstitial fibrosis okay uh, symptoms will be mainly of exertional dyspnea okay uh, as i said it will be interstitial lung disease involvement and isolation isolated pulmonary arterial hypertension okay so how do you diagnose this uh, interstitial lung disease okay uh, on the mainly on the ct scan okay contrast and non ct or hr ct you can do where there will be ground glass opacities and linear infiltrates which involves the lower two third of the lung fields okay and there will be honeycombing appearance of the lung fields uh, how do you diagnose this pulmonary function test where there will be restrictive pattern with the low forced vital capacity low residual volume and low diffusion lung uh, capacity of carbon monoxide okay so high resolution ct scan will diagnose interstitial lung disease ball is often not required lung biopsy is not all required so ild is most commonly associated with diffuse scleroderma so this is the x-ray of interstitial lung disease in scleroderma patient there will be bilateral basal reticular nodular shadows okay by basal reticular nodular shadows 
I can see the CT, high resolution CT, HRCT, fibrosing alveolitis and scleroderma. Okay, there is a peripheral rim of increased density can be seen in both the lung fields where they can see the arrow marks. This pattern of glomerulus opacification is consistent with more cellular appearance on lung biopsy. Okay, primary pulmonary hypertension seen in 10 to 15 percent of the patient with systemic sclerosis. When you say it is a primary pulmonary hypertension, means when there is a pulmonary arterial pressure of more than 25 mm Hg at rest or more than 30 mm Hg with exercise on right heart catheterization. So, estimate is systolic pulmonary arterial pressure of more than 35 mm Hg on echocardiogram. So, patient presents basically with exertional dyspnea. The pathogens would be intimal fibrosis and medial hypertrophy of the pulmonary arterioles and arteries. So, this is the x-ray of a patient with pulmonary hypertension where you can see enlargement of the pulmonary artery, artery right pulmonary artery okay there may be pneumonia okay with sec due to secondary infection okay or maybe secondary to aspiration because because of GERD dysmodality skin thickening of the chest may reduce effectiveness of cough alveolar carcinoma is one of the association where we are seeing now with the increased incidence bronchogenic carcinoma can also be an association so renal manifestation uh, there is called as scleroderma renal crisis uh, where there will be abruptly developing severe renovascular hypertension uh, there will be rise in acetyl blood pressure by more than 30 mm Hg and diastolic blood pressure by more than 20 mm Hg so how do you diagnose so there will be increase in serum creatinine by 50% over the baseline or creatinine more than 120% of the upper limit Proteinuria of more than 2 plus by dipstick method, hematuria of more than 2 plus by dipstick or more than 10 RBC per high power field. There will be thrombocytopenia less than 1 lakh. Hemolysis means you can see on the peripheral smear cystocytes, low platelets and increased reticulocyte count. It can cause headache, encephalopathy, seizures and hypertensive encephalopathy, seizures and left ventricular failure. In 90% of the people, we see a blood pressure of more than 150 by 90. It can occur also with low blood pressure less than 140 by 90, and this confirms worse prognosis. Risk factors for this renal crisis is rapidly progressive skin thickening within first two to three years, and steroid use, prednisolone of more than 15 mg per day, anti-polymerase 3 antibody, and pericardial effusion. So, how do you treat this as a scleroderma renal crisis? It is a medical emergency. Okay, so you have to admit the patient in the ICU, uh, initiate AC inhibitors, and you have to give a lifelong therapy with AC inhibitors. Dose escalation of uh, captopril is uh, required uh, according to the follow up. And AC inhibitors they do not prevent scleroderma renal crisis in f future. Okay. So what is the prognosis? Uh, overall renal case will improve with uh, ACE inhibitors. Even with ACE inhibitors, 20-50 percent will progress to end-stage renal disease. Okay, so that's why it was said that it will not prevent further episodes. Also, it with ACE inhibitors also 20-50 percent patient will progress to end-stage renal disease. And uh, among patients who required uh, dialysis during the acute phase, an appreciable proportion will be able to discontinue dialysis, means 50% will come out of dialysis. So, gastrointestinal manifestations there will be atrophy of the muscular this layer with uh, increased collagen and fibrosis of other layers. There is a dysphagia as a predominant symptom due to reduced tone of the gastroesophageal sphincter and dilatation of distal esophagus. Hypermotility of small intestine with bloating and pain. This is called a pseudo obstruction. Hypo because of hypermotility of intestine with bloating and pain. Nemo nematosis intestinalis. That is, relocated areas within the wall of small intestine can also be seen. Okay, so how do you diagnose? Uh, 
with the esophageal manometry, es esophagogram, and CT scan. Treatment will be a proton pump inhibitors and elevation of the head and of the bed. Complication is Barrett's esophagus. How do you treat small intestinal abnormalities? Uh, you give antibiotics, okay, and uh, erythromycin and the gland. So cardiac involvement. Uh, what happens? There will be there will be myocarditis, pericardial effusion, uh, which is the first in fifty to sixty percent of patients. There will be microvascular coronary artery disease in more than sixty percent of the patient. Uh, there will be microvascular CAD, pericardial and tachycardia. Uh, what are the auto antibodies which you can encounter in scleroderma? Uh, scleroderma seventy. This topoisomer is one. Is uh, there is uh, ANA pattern will be speckled, seen in 10 to 14 percent of the patient. Okay, so it is mostly associated with this uh, diffuse scleroderma. Okay, so where and RNA polymer is three frequencies for 4 to 25 percent of the people. Centromere, anti centromere antibodies seen in limited scleroderma and Scott syndrome. Okay. So organs involved with pulmonary hypertension and esophageal dysmotility crest syndrome will be there. Okay. Uh, U1 ribonucleoprotein is seen in milk connective tissue disorder. U3 ribonucleoprotein is seen also in diffuse scleroderma, uh, which has a very poor prognosis. Okay. So how do you treat scleroderma? It depends on the clinical manifestation. Uh, aggressive disease versus stable disease. Reversible with inflammation versus vasoconstriction and organ involvement. So treatment is directed at organ involvement. Okay. So how do you treat this Raynaud phenomenon? You can give calcium channel blockers, uh, nifedipine. So there will be vasospasm and uh, vasoconstriction. So you have to relieve that. So you give calcium channel blockers and you give nitroglycerin patches, sildenafil should be given alone but not with combination of nitroglycerin which will be a very fatal uh, hypotension will be there when you give sildenafil and both are vasodilators nitroglycerin uh, it is usually preserved for refractory Reynolds parenteral vasodilators like eloprost can also be given for severe disease and with impending digital ischemia for gastrointestinal environment if there is GRD give proton pump inhibitors for delayed gastric emptying peristalsis supported treatment and uh, prokinetics can be advised pulmonary involvement interstitial lung disease with active inflammation the once again if there is interstitial lung disease with uh, uh, usually interstitial pneumonia, pneumonia or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis the treatment of choice will be with your immunosuppressants like mycophenolate azathioprine cytoxin 4 plus lower dose of steroids if rna polymer is 3 is negative that is 10 mg daily avoid steroids if rna polymer is 3 is positive pulmonary hypertension you should treat with acetylators like bosentan sildenafil hippoprostenol triprostenil eloprost the definitive treatment if there is pulmonary hypertension would be lung heart transplant so if there is a myositis polymyositis overlap or mixed tissue disorder Similarly to myositis alone with methotrexate, azathioprine in combination of low dose steroids, tend to keep pregnancy around 2 around 10 mg or less to avoid risk of renal crisis. Uh, so cardiac involvement, pericarditis is there, you give NICIDs and uh, you do a pericardiosynthesis if there is a tamponade. Myocarditis, uh, myocarditis with elevated CK and troponin if coronary artery disease in, is excluded, MRI and biopsy confirms. And treatment would be generally with low dose prednisolone 10 mg per day and cytoxan nephrodipine may be also helpful so skill disease stable disease no treatment advancing diffuse with skin involvement methotrexate again you know person methotrexate mycophenolate current trial is with tocilizumab t 
deep pencil in the mind 125 mg per day the research also going on various anti fibrosis therapy like imatinib okay so this is the end of the systemic sclerosis so basically what you have to remember is it is an autoimmune disease which is unknown etiology okay uh, with which is associated with mainly resorption of lung bones and not the okay and not their resorption of long bones and not their calcification so it is a multi system disorder of unknown cause characterized by fibrosis of skin blood vessels and visceral ones and the two types are the limited system sclerosis and diffuse uh, cutaneous sclero uh, sclerosis systemic sclerosis so skin involvement is limited in uh, limited and diffuse there will be all organs may be involved with skin okay and uh, renal phenomenon precedes skin involvement in limited cutaneous uh, system sclerosis and in diffuse onset contemporaneous with skin involvement okay so so antibodies which are involved anti centromere in limited and anti topoerythromere there is scleroderma 70 in diffuse form okay so there are many organ involvement basically in limited pulmonary arterial hypertension will be there isolated or with along with the limited uh, scleroderma it will be there and in diffuse form there will be pulmonary fibrosis okay very frequent and early and it will be in a very severe form that is interstitial lung disease may also be a manifestation okay okay so this is all about your uh, system sclerosis okay thank you and all for your patience listening thank you